Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to talk about dbt init command. So in our play series where we are trying to learn dbt, we are trying to create a dbt core project as well. In today's video, we are going to learn about this dbt init command, what exactly it is and how does this init command helps you to create a proper project structure. But before moving on, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn and as well as do subscribe to my channel. So if I go back here, right, this is the same dbt project that we had created in our past video. This is the virtual environment that we created and then we installed a couple of packages because we wanted to connect dbt to the big query that we have created, right? So now this is the project. But if you remember in my previous videos, I have described you, I have shown you how a typical dbt project looks like. It has macros inside it, right? It has multiple components associated to it. Now, how do we get there from scratch? Now to do that, if you are there in this dbt project, we will go to the terminal and we will simply type dbt init command and hit enter. So the moment I come here, and I have typed this particular command and it is asking me, okay, you want to create a project. What is the name of the project, right? So simply here, you can say my project one, right? So the moment I, uh, I have written my project one and I've hit enter. So you can actually see that it says that your new dbt project, my project one was created right and then it is asking you which database would you like to use now you can see that it mentions only one big query now why does it gives you big query it has given you big query because initially in the initial setup right in the last video i have already described you that we have done the whole setup we have installed dbt big query now it has it has realized that okay you have already installed the packages for dbt big query you know connection between uh, to, to establish a connection between dbt and bigquery you have already installed a couple of packages that is where it has realized that okay you want to connect to bigquery right so it has given you one option and it is asking you to enter the number which is nothing but one over here now side by side if i show you this explorer right here you can actually see that my project one has been created and the moment i open that here you go this is exactly what we saw as different project components of dbt this is exactly what we have gone through we have understood what are macros model seed snapshot tests right we have understood that in that particular video now this is all created now here we'll move ahead and we'll say enter a number one so the moment i enter the number one big query now it is asking you okay how do you want to authenticate right how do you want to connect to the big query so we are going to use oauth so this is also have something that which i have described in my previous videos and then it is asking you to provide gcp project id now if i go to my uh, you know gcp portal if i go to my big query you can actually see that this is the project id that you have right now similarly you guys will also have some project id which is equivalent to database in your uh, google big query now you can simply copy that id you can paste it here and hit enter and then it is asking you the name of your dbt data set so basically where it is going to write right so now if i go back to my gcp right here i have something called as dbt test but now i want to name it something else let's say dbt underscore project in fact let me say dbt underscore my project one enter right now it is asking you okay how many threads you want like at a single point of time how many sql scripts you can actually run how many sql models you can run so let's say we type in here 60 and then it is asking you execution time in seconds we will just so for the execution time you're not going to write anything just simply hit enter and then it is asking you for the desired location let's say us over here and then you can actually see what has happened it is saying that profile my project one written to this particular user at this but you have now what it has done it has actually created your profiles.yaml file right now if i say that in the previous video when i was discussing about the dbt project structure i have described you in detail about the profiles.yaml file right now with all these details what has actually happened your profiles.yaml file got created now where did it got created it actually got created at this particular location right users bhavnavedi.dbt profiles.yaml now if you if you still want to see where exactly it got created you can simply say dbt 
debug hyphen hyphen config hyphen directory right so the moment i hit enter let me correct the spelling of config over here c o n f i g and i hit enter so the moment i hit enter you can actually see that it tells me that okay you can open users bhavna bedi and dbd so basically it is pointing you to the same location you can simply go and open this particular location now the moment i open this right you can actually see since it's a yaml file it got opened in you know the visual studio code itself now this is the profiles.yaml file that got created right i have opened it in a separate project over here so this is the profiles.yaml file now you remember we actually have uh we, we actually have you know dbt project file right now that project files tells you about the project and inside the project what you have to do with the database your connection to the database you know your properties related to the database these all comes under profiles.yaml file right this is exactly what has happened here now if you see my project one this is the project it is referring to output dev so if you have multiple environments you can actually put your uh, all the different environments over here so if it is dev over here you can put your production variables over here as well so for example you can uh, actually put your output as production as well so this is how you can actually uh, and data set if i want i can simply say prod so like this you can actually go ahead and you know deploy it to the multiple environments but by default it will always take the first environment so whenever you are trying to run this you have to specifically mention that okay which environment you want to run it in dev or production otherwise default it will go with the development so it says you know this is the data set this is the basically the schema in the bigquery where exactly your sql models will run you know this is the location this is the execution time you know these are the number of threads at at a single given point of time how many sql models can run you know it is how, uh, what is your database type which is nothing but bigquery and what is the your bigquery project name so this is nothing but this is how your profiles.yaml file got created right now similarly i i hope you understood what exactly did it do right what exactly you know uh, your dbt init command has done it has created your profiles.yaml file so basically whenever you run anything in the project in future step by step we will do that what it will do through your profiles.yaml file it will come here to this particular project here it will create the schema that we have mentioned dbt my project one it will create that particular schema over here and then all your pro all your sql models are going to run inside it so this is exactly you know what your dbt init command does and i hope you like this particular video do let me know in the comment section if you have any doubts and do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for being till here